The massive missile attack on Ukraine cost the Russians approximately $1.2 to $1.3 billion. This is the highest figure for the entire period of a full-scale war, writes Forbes Ukraine. According to official data from the Ukrainian authorities, Russia used 127 missiles of various types and 109 attack drones during the morning shelling. More was used only once. On February the 24th, 2022, the first day of Russia's full-scale invasion, 160 missiles, according to the Pentagon. Another attack of similar scale occurred on December the 29th, 2023, when the Russians launched 122 missiles and 36 drones with a total value of about 700 to 750 million dollars. As of August the 20th, 2024, Russia has launched a total of 9,627 missiles and 13,997 drones at Ukraine. This data was contained in a slide that appeared on camera during the speech of the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Oleksandr Syrsky, on the air of the telethon. As reported, as a result of a massive missile attack by Russians on August the 26th, seven Ukrainians were killed and 47 more were injured. Among the victims were four children, the youngest of whom is not even a year old. Among others, the Kiev hydroelectric power station was hit by Russian missiles. According to sources, neither the dam nor the hydroelectric power station itself sustained critical damage. Russia struck from the Ryazan, Lipetsk, Kursk, Voronezh, Volgograd and Belgorod regions, the temporarily occupied Crimea and the Mariupol region, Primorsky Aktask, Kursk, Yisk, Cape Chowda, the Caspian Sea region, and the eastern waters of the Black Sea. Since February the 24th, 2022, as a result of Russian airstrikes in Ukraine, 11,879 objects have been hit, of which the majority are civilian, 6,203, and military 5,676, according to the head of the armed forces, Alexander Sirsky. The efficiency of interception of caliber X555-101 and R500 cruise missiles against the Iskander Air Defense missile defense system is 66.62%. Sirsky reported on August the 20th. KH-59, KH-35, KH-31 and other similar guided missiles, 22.02%. The Institute for the Study of War reports that Russian military forces continue to redeploy units from less prioritized areas of the front in Ukraine to the front line in the Kursk region. Commanders of the Russian 810th Marine Brigade, 155th Naval Infantry Brigade, 11th Airborne Brigade 56th VDV Regiment, and 51st Airborne Regiment reported to Russian President Vladimir Putin about combat missions on Russian territories bordering Ukraine presumably referring to the Kursk region. Recently, Putin met with Russian Chief of the General Staff Army General Valery Gerasimov and Chief of the General Staff's Main Operations Directorate Colonel General Sergei Rudskoy. The meeting focused on discussing the Russian response to the Ukrainian invasion in the Kursk region. The report notes that the Institute for the Study of War has observed the combat actions of the 810th Marine Brigade, 155th Naval Infantry Brigade, and 11th Airborne Brigade in the Kursk region. Evidence suggests that the Russian military command recently redeployed units of the 56th Airborne Regiment from the Robotyne area in western Zaporizhia to Kursk. The institute has not yet seen reports of the 51st Airborne Regiment's units fighting in the Kursk region. However, the fact that the commander of the 51st Airborne Regiment informed Putin alongside commanders of other units that recently redeployed to Kursk suggests that the 51st Airborne Regiment's units likely also moved to the area. Over the past months, the 51st Airborne Regiment has been fighting in the Severodonetsk direction alongside other units of the 106th Airborne Division. Given the situation, ASW suggests that Russia has also redeployed units of the 810th and 155th Naval Infantry Brigade from the front line in northern Kharkiv and likely redeployed units of the 11th Airborne Brigade from the broader Chasevyar area. 
The Russian military command is resisting operational pressures to redeploy forces away from its high-priority offensive effort to seize Pokrovsk in the Donetsk region and will likely continue to draw forces from lower-priority offensive operations elsewhere throughout the theater to defend in the Kursk region, the report states.